the integral is also called the antiderivative because it is the reverse of the derivative. We're taking the integral of the force with respect to position, dx with respect to position. So the integral of the force, and this is the initial and the final condition. That's what this means. So let's just walk through. If we know y equals x squared, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to what? Go oh, ahead. Oh, that'd be 2x. 2x. Right? You guys have seen this before. Okay. So if y equals the integral of 2x dx, that's going to be equal to, Vlad, let's do this, we'll do it in two steps. It's going to be equal to 2 times x squared divided by 2, right? Because this is x to the first power. So we raise the exponent by 1, and we divide by that raised exponent by 1. And yes, it ends up being equal to x squared. And you can see how this is the derivative, this is the antiderivative, right? the integral, the antiderivative. Let's do another one. If y equals 3x cubed, then dy dx equals what, Sarah Jane? 9x uh, squared. 9x squared. Therefore, if y equals the integral of 9x squared with respect to x, then that is equal to what, Nitish? Uh, 9x cubed over uh, 3. Which is equal to 3x yes. cubed. Good. Now we'll do one without doing the derivative first. Let's say y is equal to the integral of 4x to the fourth power dx. What is the integral uh, with respect to x of 4x to the fourth power dx? Uh, Ms. Yang. Uh, I'm sorry, I almost got the 4. 4 fifths x to the fifth. Okay, 4, I'll just do it this way, but yes, 4 fifths times x to the fifth power. Good. How about if y equals the integral of 6x squared plus x with respect to x? What is the integral of that doorstep? Uh, 6x squared. In other words, if we work it out here, 2x cubed plus x squared. Okay. That is the basic concept of the integral. Wait, what's the x squared plus one half x The derivative, what is it? Right, in, in terms of the graph, I agree, the instantaneous rate of change, was that? The slope, okay. Derivative is the slope of the line at any particular point. The integral is the area under the curve. And I'm going to put under in quotes, and I'll talk about why that's in quotes in just a minute. Again, from your text. The integral is basically taking and approximating this as a rectangle, and figuring out the area of this rectangle, and taking a whole bunch of rectangles for the curve. And then what it does is it takes the limit as delta x here goes to something that's infinitesimally small. So the limit as that approaches 0. And then the area under the curve would be the work or the integral. So note this is very similar to what we did with the derivative where we took the change in x and got that closer and closer to 0 to get to the slope of the line. Here we're getting the, where the delta x approaches 
zero so that we can get to an infinite number of these infinitesimally, yes, an infinite number of infinitesimally small areas and adding all of them up together to get the area under the curve. Clearly in your math class you'll go through exactly how that works in uh, this class. I'm not going to worry too much about going through exactly how all of that math works, but we are going to use the integral. So let's walk through what this looks like as far as a graph is concerned. So let's say we have the equation, the integral of x dx from 0 to 2. If you look at a graph, what that's going to be is this is the function, right? This is y equals x. That's the function. It should go through the 0, 0. That's not helpful. We have a graph that looks like this. And we're taking from 0 to 2. Well, because y equals x, we also know that this value up here, the y value, is 2. And what this is going to do when we take the integral is going to be the area under the curve, which is the area of this. We already actually know the area of this. We have an equation for it. Eric, it is? Um, what's the shape? Triangle. It's a triangle. What's the area of a triangle? Uh, one, half base times height. one half base times height. So we're starting with a very simple example so you can see that this works out to be the area. Okay, so take the integral for me. The integral of x with respect to x. Um, type. One half x squared. Uh, it's going to be x squared over 2 or 1 half x squared. Uh, and so what we get here is now to show the limits, what you need to do is go from 0 to 2. So I know this is new for a lot of you and for the, some of you who have already taken count, you like to ignore some of this stuff, so please pay attention. This is the integral from the initial to the final position. So x goes from 0 to 2 and we're uh, taking the integral with respect to x. And then we've taken the integral over here and we put this bracket over here to continue the limits from 0 to 2. So this is equal to position final squared over 2 minus position initial squared over 2 from 0 to 2, where our final position is 2 and our initial position is 0. So this is going to be equal to 2 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. Or if you prefer, it's equal to 1 half of 2 times 2. 1 half base times height. Very simple example. You can see that this ends up being equal to 2. Okay, let's do a slightly more complicated one. Let's say we're taking the integral of 3x squared dx from negative 1 to 2. Now, this graph, well, 3x squared just looks something like this. And we're taking the area from negative 1 to positive 2. So we're figuring out the area there. Clearly, we don't have an equation or something like that. But we can figure out the area here from doing our integral. So please take the integral of 3x squared, Mr. B. 3x cubed over 3. Good job. Um, from 0 to, or negative 1 to 2. Not bad. It's okay. From negative 1 to 2. In other words, x cubed from negative 1 to 2. What do I write next, Bill? Xf cubed. Oh, yeah, cubed over 3. I ah, remember it was 3x cubed over 3, the 3's canceled out. Oh, so just one. Right. right. Okay. Nice. Uh, x uh, is squared. No, cubed. Oh, okay. Rather than saying f and i, you should probably get in the habit of saying initial and final. It's just better for your brain. You remember more what it actually is. And? All right, look back it. from negative 1 to 2. So this is equal to the position final, which is 2 cubed, 
minus the position initial, which is negative 1 cubed. 2 cubed is 8 minus a negative 1 cubed, which is still negative 1. So we have 8 minus a negative 1, which gives us that. What is the right the xf minus xi? Uh, what I would say is, at this point, I'm showing it to be absolutely clear. That's the one step that I would say you could probably stop. You could probably not show every time. I would be OK with that. Another example. Let's do the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared minus 2x with respect to x. Graph. Looks like this. We have a curve that looks like this. It should go through right there. And you can see this point right here is going to be at 2 because 2 squared is 2 minus 2 times 2, which is going to give you 0 there. So what we're figuring out is the area under the curve, which is going to be that area there. Take the integral, please, Hillary. Um, x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared over 2. So we have x cubed over 3 minus x squared from 0 to 2. And as Vlad pointed out, you're going to see I'm going to, and I'm not going to do that, x final, the final over 3 minus the final squared uh, minus the quantity of the position initial cubed over 3 minus position initial squared. And this is from 0 to 2. So you can see we have 2 cubed over 3 minus 2 squared minus 0. I'll just put a big 0 because it's all going to end up being 0. <coughs> 2 cubed is 8. 8 over 3 minus 2 squared is 4. We get negative 4 thirds. Which brings us to why I put the quotes on under. The integral is the area under the curve. So who could tell me why it's negative? Left. It's below the x-axis. Any area below the x-axis is negative. Area above the x-axis is positive. So when we refer to the area under the curve, what we truly mean is it's the area between the curve and the x-axis where the area above the curve is positive and the area under the curve is negative. So it's something to be very careful of. Make sure you understand that area is positive, whereas area under the curve is negative. 